with the Iranian Air Force receiving 79 F-14 Tomcat air superiority fighters from the untied states in the 1970s, the first fourth-generation combat jet ever to see service, and by far the most capable platform in air-to-air -air combat of its time, the fleet of elite fighters was very soon pressed into service against the invading forces of neighboring Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War. Iraq's Air Force force retained a vast numerical advantage over the Iranian fleet, and this was compounded by the fact that the majority of Iranian US-made jets were grounded due to a lack of parts following the sharp deterioration of relations with the Western Bloc a year before the war's outbreak, a result of the overthrow of the country's Pahlavi dynasty and the coming to power of an Islamic Republican government. The Iraqi fleet, however, comprised largely of downgraded export variants of Soviet second- and third-generation fighters and piloted with questionable skill, were no match for the Iranian F-14 fleet. While only a dozen or so of Iran's F-14s were flyable at the war's outbreak, the Tomcats reportedly downed 160 Iraqi jets in the air, while only three were shot down by Iraqi fighters. Though Iran's Tomcats were formidable in an air superiority role, the air war played a relatively minor role in a conflict closely resembling the European theater of First World War, primarily fought by masses of ground troops. One invaluable Iraqi asset which served in a highly complementary role to its arsenal of Soviet-built Scud B ballistic missiles was its MiG-25 Foxbat fleet, the mainstay of which were bomber, rather than interceptor variants of the elite combat platform. The fastest combat aircraft ever to enter service to this day, the MiG-25 was all but invulnerable when flying near its peak altitude, as demonstrated on numerous fronts from the Israeli-held Sinai Peninsula to the Indian-Pakistani border. While Iran's Tomcats were acquired largely with interception of the MiG-25 jets in mind, they themselves struggled to down Iraq's Foxbats despite being perhaps the best-suited asset anywhere in the world for doing so. With bomber variants of the MiG-25, the MiG-25RB, wreaking havoc on Iranian cities, dropping high payloads with a considerable degree of prevision from altitudes approaching 21 kilometers, Iran sought to acquire a similarly capable strike asset of its own. Number of sources have disputed how the Iranian Air Force came to modify its Tomcat fleet for a strike role, with the country claiming it a successful indigenous initiative, while Western analysts have pointed to U.S. assistance from the Iran-Contras scandal, under which in return for assistance in recovering American hostages in Lebanon and provision of funds which were funneled to aid U.S.-backed militants in Latin America, the Contras Iran was provided with a number of armaments including much-needed parts for its F-14 fleet. Bomb racks used by the Iranian Tomcats bear a close resemblance to U.S. Air Force Bru 34s and Bru 42s, first used in the mid-1980s at around the same time they started to be employed by Iran. It also remains a possibility that Iraq acquired these racks through the black market, a key source of parts for Western weapon systems following the deterioration of relations with the Western Bloc. As the war turned further in Iran's favor from the mid-1980s, and the country invested heavily in acquiring strike capabilities from North Korea, namely massive 170mm Coxon artillery guns, an asset without parallel anywhere in the world, and Hwasong-5 ballistic missiles, the Iranian Air Force also sought to modify its F-14 jets to fulfill a bombing role. While the Tomcats lacked the high operational altitudes of the F-4 Phantoms, they were faster and carried a considerably higher payload. More importantly however, the fear they inspired in Iraq's air force, turning back entire attack formations with their very presence due to their fearsome reputation, meant that they were far less likely to be intercepted on course. With the Phantoms lacking sophisticated bomb aiming computers or sensors which seriously restricted their accuracy in a bomber role, the F-14's far more powerful computer allowed the Iranian air force to modify the jets with automatic bomb release algorithms.
the Tomcat's central under fuselage canal further served to reduce the drag effect from large bomb loads. While far from as capable or survivable as the MiG-25RB, the F-14 could thus be modified into a formidable bomber. However they were acquired, the bombing racks were used to modify a number of Tomcats into highly capable strike fighters, somewhat comparable to the modifications which would later be carried out on American F-15 Eagle heavy air superiority jets to develop the F-15E strike fighter. The first strike mission carried out was undertaken by Iranian Air Force Brigadier General Sharm Rastami, one of very few pilots who has successfully downed an Iraqi Foxbat and was carried out in 1985. By this time Iranian forces had largely repelled the Iraqi invasion and were beginning a counter-offensive of their own. The strike mission was carried out from 5th Air Base and targeted the field headquarters of an Iraqi division near the front lines. While relatively safe from interception, the Iranian crew's inexperience in carrying out strike missions meant that the bombs fell wide off the mark and the mission failed. The failure prompted further modifications to the Tomcats for future missions. Iran sought to develop a heavier bomb for its Tomcats, which the Air Force believed would have more of an impact than several light munitions, and a massive 3,200 kg bomb was thus produced indigenously and deployed by the F-14. The weapon had the destructive potential of more than three Scud-B missiles and was intended to be a game-changer for the front lines where Iraqi ground forces, ill defended from air attacks, would be vulnerable to destruction, with the additional effect of disrupting morale the Iranian Air Force's commander-in-chief. General Abbas Babi reportedly traveled to a frontline observation post to personally monitor the effect of the new munition. While initially the bomb was thought to have been a dud, an explosion later occurred far from target. Whether the Iranian Air Force would later be able to apply the new bombs more effectively remains unknown, but the deployment of the weapon and the size of the explosion reportedly did have a considerable psychological impact on Iraqi forces.